With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? Several folks have asked me how I found so much adventure in those early days of the West. The answer is, there was always plenty for a man to do just minding his own business. But sometimes trouble popped up when you least expected it. I remember one time California and I'd been riding across the hills under the burning sun, and suddenly we came on the prettiest little stream shaded by some cottonwoods. Now, if you weren't in any particular hurry, what would you do in a case like that? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, and that's just what California and I were doing. Oh, this feels good. Yippee! <laughs> Ain't nothing like a good swim to eat a man's bones when he's been riding along as we have up here. Uh, uh, here, come on. I'll give you a hand up this slick back. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Say, this is slicker. Now, now, where in turn nation did we put our clothes? Well, we drifted downstream quite a ways. Oh, there they are, hanging on that bush up there. Up we go. Ah. <sighs> Well, here's your stuff, Hoppy, and here... Well, well, I'll be horn swoggled. What have you got there, California? Looks like some low-down sneaking coyote took off with my clothes and left his. Ha, 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 ha. Well, if they fit, you got the best of the bargain. Nice black Stetson, black boot, black string tie, mighty fancy. Uh, they, they, <laughs> they seem to fit all right, and uh, my duds was getting stiff enough to walk off by themselves anyway. <laughs> Reckon that's what happened, Hoppy? <laughs> see, see, uh, look at what's in this pocket. Looks like a black mask to me. And it's got fresh blood on it. And Hoppy, this colt, uh, it ain't mine, and it's just been fired, uh, what do you make of this, Hoppy? Looks pretty plain to me now, and I don't like it. There's been a shooting, maybe a killing. You hear that, Hoppy? I sure do. Well, there they are. If that ain't a posse, Hoppy, then I'm a ring-tailed skunk. Well, it's a posse, all right. And they're moving fast enough to be following a fresh trail. And powerful anxious to meet up with a gent wearing black clothes, if I figure right. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get a go on You're Hoppy. in a tight spot, California. But you'd be in a worse spot if you ran. We've got to explain what really happened. Uh, yeah, and, and if they don't believe someone switched clothes with me, uh, then what? Uh, way they're riding, they mean business. Here's what we'll do. You stay and try to explain. The posse hasn't sighted us yet, and I'll slip around back of these cottonwoods. If they don't believe you, I'll make my play. Hurry. Uh, they're starting around the river bend. That's it, Hoppy. And, uh, Hoppy, if they start dragging out a hemp neck stretcher... Don't worry, California. Don't worry. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and The Killer in Black. Hoppy's pal, California, is in real danger being found in those black clothes. But Hoppy insists that California try to explain his way out of it. That's better than starting to run when he hasn't done anything wrong, Hoppy figures. And anyway, Hoppy's standing by to see that his pal gets a fair chance. All right, you crawling killer. I'd sure hate to plug you when so many's waiting to see your next stretch. But don't you make no fancy moves. Oh, no, no, Sheriff, uh, I ain't the man you're looking for. I know it looks awful funny, me dressed in this black ain't suit, Ain't nothing but... funny about the way you killed old Bill Ryan. Huh? Didn't ever always agree with what he wrote in that weekly gazette. But no square editor ever set a stick of type. Uh, maybe so. Get on that, that horse uh, of yours there. Uh, 
Taking you in. Yes, sir. No, no, wait, 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 wait a minute, Sheriff. Like I was telling you, I was swimming in this here creek, and when I got out, somebody had tucked my clothes and left these. I never shot nobody. I, you I, get your uh, chance to tell that one in court, mister, but I'm afeard the jury will just die laughing. Now, get up on that horse. No, 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 just let me tell you, Sheriff. You, 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 you got to believe Shut me, up, Sheriff. Shut up, start moving. Uh, get him up, Sheriff. I got you covered. I did, sir. What's that? <laughs> and next time, I'm not shooting in front of your feet. Don't know what you think you're doing back in them bushes, stranger. But you ain't getting away with this. I'm not doing bad so far, am I, Sheriff? California, take up a collection of the shooting irons. So that's the name, huh? Seems I've seen that face before, too. I've got it. You're the California that's a wrangler over at the Bar 20. Well, you won't get away with this. This is necessary, Sheriff. Start walking back to that butte over there, all of you. And don't look back. When you get there, turn your horses around and walk them back. Your six shooters will be here waiting. You're going to regret this, mister. Start walking, Sheriff. All right, I'll walk. Oh, now you done it, Hoppy. Let my name slip out. No reason to hide your name, California. Not set. The sheriff thinks I killed a gent, and once he ever catches up with me, he, uh, he ain't exactly gonna love me, and uh, especially after this play of yours. Well, I hate to cross up the law, but this lawman was blind. If they'd taken you in, I don't think you'd have had a chance. Maybe I ain't got one anyways. Well, uh, well, uh, what do we do now, Hoppy? Do? What would any man do? We got to find the killer before the law closes in. Oh, quit talking about the law closing in and think of something. I've got it. Maybe it's a good thing the sheriff does know your name. He'll head for the bar 20 and... The... That don't make me feel any better, Hoppy. That means he can't get back to Coyote Junction much before morning. Hoppy? Uh, Hoppy, you wouldn't mean that me and you are going back into town with me wearing these duds. We got some nosing around to do, and that's the place to do it. It'll be dark, and I'll find some way to sneak you into a hotel room. Sooner we make Coyote Junction, the better. There's the hotel down at the end of the street. We'll tie up here, and I'm going to get a room. You go around and back to the hotel and wait. If I can't get the right kind of room in a few minutes, I'll come back there. Right, Hoppy. Do your best. Got a room on the first floor, friend? Uh, something for a crippled gent so he doesn't have stairs to climb? I got a room right in the street if you want it. Well, I wanted something quiet. Well, for something quiet, uh, better take room four back on the alley. Hey, what was you to think if I told you there was a killing here this afternoon? Why, uh, why, you're kidding. Oh, I ain't a kidding either. Some varmint stuck a colt in old Bill Ryan's rib and told him to hand over his money. And what did Mr. Ryan do? My old Bill waded right into the guy. Wouldn't take orders from nobody. Took a slug in the shoulder, another in the hip. Just kept moving in. My, my. Finally, the third slug caught him in the gizzard. His poor wife's in the back room, seen it all. You don't say. Well, if it's that rough around here, I'd better take the quiet room on the alley. Uh, yeah, well, just sign your room on this line here. There, that ought to do it. Yeah, here's your key. And straight back in the hallway there. Say, uh, uh, isn't it kind of funny the hold-up man didn't stick up the bank? Uh, not much money in a newspaper office. Well, not so funny if you know this town. Bank's been robbed so much they got three sheriff's deputies working as clerks, waiting for the hold-up men to come back. Besides, old Bill Ryan kept his bank rolling on his hip. Everybody knew it. I see. Well, good night, friend. Loud. Don't want the clerk to know I'm having a visitor. Uh, come on. Here you go. I'm leaving you in here. And don't you set foot outside this room. You got it? Sure, sure. But uh, where are you going, Hoppy? You got anything to work on? Huh? Well, a little, thanks to the hotel clerk. How in turnation... Old Bill Ryan didn't trust banks. Carried his money in his pocket. 
An outsider wouldn't know that, but a local man would. Mm -hmm. That's pretty silly, Coppy, but uh, where do you go from there? Even if it was a local hombre. There was a witness to the killing. Bill Ryan's own wife. Oh, poor woman. Well, wish you luck, Coppy. Thanks, California. But remember, keep the door locked and stay inside. <laughs> I I hated to break in on you, Mrs. Ryan, knowing your sorrow, but, but I know you want the real killer brought to justice. It's exactly the way I told it. The same man that killed your husband is the one who switched clothes with my partner, California. You you sound sincere, Mr. Cassidy. I, well, I do believe you. But if California didn't kill my husband, then who did? I don't know yet, Mrs. Ryan, but you can help me. Will you, will you try? You bet I'll try. What do you want me to do? Mrs. Ryan, your husband was a man who believed in printing the truth. The sheriff told me that much. He was a crusader, Mr. Cassidy. He loved this town and wanted it kept clean. When he saw evil things, he did his duty. Even if it meant making a few people angry? Yes, that's true. Nick Lyman, for one. Nick owns the Lucky Chance Casino. And what did he print about Lyman? That you could watch Nick Lyman's roulette wheel all night and never see a winner. Well, the sheriff sure had it right about your husband's courage. Yes. And the sheriff was a mite put out himself. With election coming on, Bill was making some pretty pointed references to the wave of bank robberies we've been having. And there's one more person who didn't like Bill. Who's that, Mrs. Ryan? Sam Fleeson, the banker's son-in-law. How does he fit into the picture? All three of the holdups this last month were during the noon hour when Sam was alone in the bank. Hmm. Maybe the bandit figured he had a good thing. Maybe. But my husband didn't think Sam put up enough of a fight. Well, this supplies Sam Fleeson with a motive, too. Now, uh, he wouldn't just happen to be a fellow who wears an all-black outfit. Black tie, black Stetson. I don't think that'll help much, Mr. Cassidy. True, Sam Fleeson wears an outfit like that. But so does every other clerk in the bank. And so does Nick Lyman when he's at the lucky chance. So, I'm afraid you're right back where you... Something's what? happening down the street. Hard to tell what. I'll blow out the lamp so we can see better. What? It looks like a mob, and and they're heading right this way. They sure are, and there's a lot of them. They're all following the sheriff right up to the jail. So they are, Mrs. Ryan, so they they're are. They're still milling around outside that jail. I can't imagine... Uh, Mrs. Ryan, if you'll excuse me, I'm going down there. But why, Mr. Cassidy? Because the sheriff wasn't alone, Mrs. Ryan. My partner, California, was handcuffed to him. And now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and The Killer in Black. California has been led into the jail, and an angry mob mills about threateningly outside, eager to avenge the murder of Bill Ryan. Now, what do you want? I just happen to see you bring in a friend of mine, Sheriff. And you ain't very particular about your friends. This one happens to be a killer. That's your idea. I've got mine. Talking kind of big, ain't you? I happen no to be... No offense, Sheriff. Right now, I'd like to talk to my friend. Maybe he wants a lawyer. Lawyer? The way that mob sounds, I'm afraid there's no time nor use for a lawyer. I'm going back there, Sheriff. Wait a minute, stranger. I never forget a voice. You're the gent who was hiding in the brush this afternoon. But Sheriff, I can... Now, prove... wait a minute. Hand over your gun. I got you covered. Now turn around and back over here, gentle-like. Well, looks like you got me, Sheriff. I'll go to my cell, peaceable. You want to see your pal California, huh? Well, you can have a nice visit, because you're going to be in the same cell with him. Now inside with you. I sure hate to do this, but... Oh. You should never put your six-shooter away when you're locking a cell door. Nice work, Hoppy. Catch him, California. Oh. Ease him down gentle like. Yeah. Oh, you sure nailed him. Uh, but from the way he's breathing, he ain't going to be out too long. Why'd you leave the hotel, California? 
Well, uh, well, uh, I heard a noise and looked outside, and there was a feller carrying a bundle, a bundle of my clothes, and headed straight for Coyote Creek with Are you sure? Sure as a heifer looking for a calf. Uh, when he went past the little shack behind the hotel, there was a light burning, uh, and I seen the red patch. Uh, the widow woman sold my britches. Then what happened? Well, uh, a minute later, this gent was tying a rock to my duds, getting ready to sink him. So, you just decided to wander outside... How'd you get caught? Why, uh, well, I was just a-closing in on him, and then I slipped on the creek bank. Sure, sure. And this hombre turns round and kicks me right in the chin, and hard. Well, I reckon I was still out of my head when I wandered out into the street and smacked dab into the sheriff. Well, I figured the sheriff would be riding toward the bar 20. He sent his men on, but he decided to come back, and, uh, speaking of coming back, looks like the sheriff's making another comeback right now. Well, no chance getting you out past that mob, California. For the time being, you're as safe here as anywhere. Here's the sheriff's gun. I ain't very safe anywhere at all, Harvey. I'm scared. I've got an angle. I'll be seeing you. This is a good, strong jail. Now, don't worry. Sure wish I had a harp in here. I could start getting in a few practice licks. Those hombres sound awful, Hoppy. Uh, when I come back, I'll rattle these cell bars from the outside window. Keep watching the alley for me. If you want in, just shove the door. You must be Nick Lyman. Your faro dealer said I'd find you up here. If you're squawking because you got cleaned out downstairs, skip it. Boot Hill's full of gents who made cracks about my gaming tables. Yeah, I guess old Bill Ryan was the last to make himself heard. He's dead, all right, and I can't say I'm sorry. Wait a minute, stranger. Just how did you mean that crack? Like you think I meant it. If anyone had a reason to murder him, Lyman, you had one. You're getting kind of careless, ain't you, stranger? That shooting's only a sample. Look at your right sleeve. One through there and two through your hat. <laughs> well, I've got to admit it was good shooting. Which reminds me, never talk to a gent again when he's got his hands out of sight behind the desk. There's seven notches on this shooting iron, stranger, but there ain't none of them got there because a man was only flapping his jaw. When I kill, it's because the other gent went for his gun first. Now, if you want to start for your gun, go ahead. And if you don't, turn around and walk out peaceable like. That's just what I'll do. Walk out peaceable. And thanks for the information. <laughs> you didn't get any information out of me. You're wrong, Lyman. And it's probably the first time in your life you're not betting on a sure thing. So long. <laughs> California. California. Yeah, Hoppy. Yeah, I'm still here. But I wouldn't be if I was a gopher. I'm getting more to work on, California. So am I. Something awful important just happened. Look down the alley. See the little shack where the light's burning? Well, that's where the gent was standing when he tossed your duds into Coyote Creek. Yeah, and whoever he was, he must have done some thinking, because he just come back. Where'd he go? I seen him go into the shack. Maybe now he's afraid someone who lives in that set shack saw him knock me out. The varmint probably didn't think about a witness till his nerves settled. Well, it could have been the man who lives there you just saw. Oh, what I'm trying to tell you is this varmint just didn't walk in. He snuck in and... Now I see what you're driving at. And the light's out, too. Oh. Now, just a minute. I'll get a light. Oh. Now, oh, there you are, friend. Oh, I, I ain't hurt too bad. Just grazed my shoulder. What happened? That's what I want to ask you. I don't know. I was just fixing my supper when this fellow rushes in, blazing away. Lucky for me, he couldn't see me too good from the doorway. I'd be a goner. Did you get a look at this fellow when he came in shooting? No, sir, but if an I did, I'd be lighting out for the varmint right now, by golly. Well, maybe I can save you the trouble. Mr. Cassidy? Right now, you'd better look after that shoulder of yours. Yeah. Mr. Cassidy. What is it, Mrs. Ryan? How'd you find me here? Oh, California. 
Down at the jail, I just left me. California What's told up? me. The mob's cut down a tree. They're going to use it to batter down the jail door. How much longer will it take? Half an hour at most. It's horrible. I tried to reason with them, but they wouldn't even listen to me. I've got just one more trick to play, and if it doesn't work, well, I... I'm afraid it'll be too late. Those men are sure California killed my husband. They're wild. They... Where will I find Sam Fleece and the banker's son-in-law? He lives in the house behind the bank, but he's out of town. I'm hoping he's had time to get back. Now listen carefully, Mrs. Ryan. I want you to hide right here beside this shack. There's something you will have to hear. But I don't understand. My friend's life may depend on it. Please do as I ask. Goodbye, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> And I take it, Fleeson, you aren't willing to make the loan to me on my face. I never heard of such a thing. First you break in on me when I'm tired after a long trip, and you try to borrow money when it isn't even banking hours. Finally, you can't even offer any security. Well, I guess that's it, then. But I told you why I had to ask for it. My partner was carrying all our money Well, and... that's too bad. But I can't do business with you. Now, if you'll leave me alone, I'll try to get some sleep. Good night, Mr. Fleeson. <laughs> Mrs. Ryan, where are you? Over here. If I've guessed right, it won't be long. Well, they got their tree cut, but they'll have to trim it some before they can use it. That'll take the most time. Isn't there something? Wait. That... Listen. You hear that? Someone's coming. Who is it? The man who killed your husband, Mrs. Ryan. The man who tried to kill the old timer inside this shack. <gasps> he's sneaking down to the river bank now, and I know what he's after. He's not worried about being caught. Not with the whole town up at the jail. He... He's getting into the water. Yeah. All right, Sam Fleeson. I can see you, but you can't see me. Just what's the idea? Kind of cold to go swimming, isn't it? And it doesn't look like you're carrying a fish pole either. If I want to go wading, that's my business. Looks like old Bill Ryan was getting too close to the solution of those bank robberies, wasn't he? That's a lie. You can't prove any of this nonsense. You'll prove it for me, Fleeson. In fact, you already have. But what are you talking about? I asked you for a loan because someone had taken my partner's clothes with all our money in them. When you came out to this creek to try to find that money, Fleeson, you signed your confession of the murder of Bill Ryan. Because the murderer is the only man who knew where those clothes were. Come on, Fleeson, you're through. Come and get me, Cassidy. You're losing your head again, Fleeson. Four shots at the old-timer inside this shack. And one makes five. You haven't reloaded. You've got only one left. That's a bad gamble, I'm warning you. I'll take my chances, Fleeson. You're an awful poor shot and you know it. Now, Fleeson, I'll come and get you. Maybe this gun's empty. But I can sure couch you with it, Cassidy. Stay away. I'm warning you. No. Oh. Ah, quite a dive, Fleeson. Now, up. Up oh. you go. Oh. And down you go again. Oh. Ah. Now we'll just hold you down until you have a change of heart about confessing. And now to the conclusion of The Killer in Black. Up here, I reckon you wanted a good night's sleep, but I ain't exactly in love with the Coyote Junction. <laughs> oh, I feel all right, California, now that it's over and we got Fleeson's confession. <laughs> but I've got to admit, you sure look funny marching out of jail with that big rope around your skinny neck. Well, looks to me like you sure took your time of getting there. Well, it's just as I was telling you. The killer took four shots to murder poor Bill Ryan at close range. So all I knew for certain was he was a mighty poor shot. From uh, the looks of them holes in your hat and shirt, uh, that let out Nick Lyman, the gambler. <laughs> it sure did. That was as pretty a shooting exhibition as I ever saw. And you know, the sheriff wasn't the killer. A lawman's got to be able to shoot pretty straight, which left Sam Fleece. But the only way I could confirm my suspicions was to get him to look for your clothes where he tossed them into the creek. It all took time, California. Yeah, yeah, I know it did, Hoppy. 
Well, maybe the boys at Bar 20 will think I'm quite a dude in this black outfit of fleecing. <laughs> and you know, uh, I've been thinking, hmm? if I didn't know you so darn well, I'd suspect you was in cahoots with the killer right from the beginning. What? Well, uh, it was just because I was dressed all in black that I had such a narrow escape. Yeah? Yeah, and this time riding out's the first time I can remember in ten years that you ain't been dressed all in black. <laughs> yeah? Well, so it is. <laughs> well, Hoppy gets his man again, and this time it's the killer in black. Hoppy's next story concerns his visiting an old Scots friend by the name of MacDonald MacDonald and becoming a bodyguard to a French songbird who receives a note of warning threatening certain death. Hoppy calls this one coming attraction murder. So remember to be with us for another fast-moving episode of Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Killer in Black was written by Sidney S. Swirsky and Dwayne Yarnell. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.